So have you ever wondered what some of our earliest manuscripts look like and how important they are? We're gonna talk about that today on the Puzzle Piece Exegete. What is up everyone? Welcome to the Puzzle Piece XG. My name is Steven Rodriguez and if you're new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell because this is the place where we get deep into God's Word. We look at the biblical context, original languages, and today I got a treat for you because we're going to be looking at some of our earliest and most reliable New Testament manuscripts. Now this is essentially going to be a 30,000 foot overview, a basic introduction, but I think it's important. I really geek out when I can take a look at some of these, these manuscripts, but I think it's important for us to see what these manuscripts look like and why they are important. So let's take a look at our first one. It's called P46. P stands for papyrus, which was the style or the actual material that it was written on, and 46 is its catalog number, so P46. And it comes around the year 200, and why it's important is it contains our oldest writings of Paul. It has Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians, and 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. And it also includes Hebrews. Many in the early church thought that Paul wrote Hebrews, so it's contained in there as well. Our next one is P66, also from around the year 200 AD. And why it's important is it contains some of our oldest writings of the Gospel of John. And what you have there blown up is John 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Our next one is P52, and why this is so important is it contains our oldest fragment we have in existence of the Bible, dating from around the year 100 AD to 150 AD. It's about the size of a credit card, really small, front and back, and what we have here are portions of John 18. Our next one is P72, one of my personal favorites from around the 3rd century. And why it's important is it contains our oldest writings of 1st and 2nd Peter and Jude. And it also contains Psalms 33 and 34, as well as some other non-canonical books. Which probably means that it was someone's personal travel companion, right? They traveled with it. It has a very high view of Christ and a very high view of the Holy Spirit. Our next style of manuscripts when we look at are what are called majuscule or unseal manuscripts. And essentially all that means is all capital letters. And there are four great majuscules that were, or unsealed that we're going to look at today and we're going to throw another one in there. The first one is Codex Sinaiticus from around the year 350 to 375 AD. It is without a doubt one of our most important New Testament manuscript witnesses, not only for the New Testament, but also for the Old Testament, because it contains all the New Testament and all the Old Testament in Greek. And what we have here is John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Our next magiskill that we're going to look at is what is called Codex Vaticanus, and it is also of equal importance. And what we have here is scribes who were extreme professionals. And much like the other Codex Sinaiticus, it is one of our most important New Testament witnesses. And what we have here also John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Our next great unseal or magiskill we're going to look at today is Codex Alexandrinus from the early 400s. Again, containing most of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Again, we have John 1 there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Our next great unseal or magical we're going to look at is Codex Ephraimi Rescriptus from around the early 400s. Now, what makes this so significant is it's what's called a palimpsest. A palimpsest essentially is when you had a text that was erased. I mean, manuscripts were very expensive to make back in the day, and so often you would erase a manuscript and write on top of it. And that's exactly what we have here. In the blue text is what we want to read, right? It, that's the biblical text, Codex Ephraimi, right below there. And on top of it is centuries later someone actually erased this manuscript and wrote on top of it in black and because of modern technology we're actually able to be able to see and read what's beneath our next unseal or magical that we're going to look at is Codex Bazai. Now, what makes this so important is it contains Greek on one side and Latin on the other. Out from the early 400s, and what we have there again, John 1.1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
Our last manuscript we're going to look at today is Manuscript 33. Around the 9th century or so, the style of writing started to change. We went from all capitals to lowercase or a cursive script. And what we have here from the 9th century is often called the Queen of Cursives. Manuscript 33 or Minuscule 33 is an extremely important text. And what we have there again, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I tried to pull from John 1.1 1, 1 as much as possible. So if you guys look back, most of these are going to be from John 1.1. 1, 1. I want to be able to see and have you guys compare kind of what it looks like from manuscript to manuscript. And so this, again, is just a basic introduction into some of our earliest and most reliable and most important New Testament manuscripts. So make sure to drop a comment, a like, and subscribe if you want to, for me to do other videos like this. This will be a reference point video in case I ever reference Codex Sinaiticus or Codex Vaticanus. You can go back and look at this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Till next time, keep putting those puzzle pieces together. God bless.